Good morning. Our call to worship is from Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Amen. We'll ask you to stand as you are able and we will sing the three verses of number 225. Come Christians, join to sing. Please be seated. In addition to the announcements in the bulletin, I have a couple of things I would like to highlight. Ladies' Bible study is canceled this week. Um, and there's also the seniors' lunch on, luncheon on the 15th, which is, I believe, Thursday, right? Yes. And after the seniors' luncheon, there will be a missions meeting. And it says March the 14th, so now I'm confused as to which date it is. It's the 15th? Okay. You shouldn't do that, mess with my mind so early in the morning. Other than that, I think the rest of the uh, announcements are very self-explanatory. I'm gonna wish each and every one of you a very hearty welcome as we are in this Lent season, as we remember our Lord and Savior for all that he has done. I ask you to continue to uh, to hold each other up in prayer during this time as well. This time I would like to lead you in our prayer of invocation and partway through that prayer, um, I will be stopping for you to do your personal prayer as well. Shall we pray? Father, we have come to sing, Alleluia, Amen, to you, our Redeemer King. Our call to worship assures us of your faithfulness it assures us that you are always there for us. This morning we come to bring praise and glory to you through worship. We will soon be singing what a friend we have in Jesus and that we can carry everything to you, O Lord, in prayer. We seek you now in a few minutes of silent personal prayers. We individually bring our praise and needs to your throne of grace. Father, we thank you for listening to your children praying. 
We thank you for this time of worship and fellowship. We thank you for today's message, the waste of, of nard. You, O oh Lord, were in Simon's house when you received his gift. We acknowledge all gifts brought to you with love and thanksgiving bring us into a deeper relationship with you. Keep us ever focused on your ultimate gift to us. Father, we ask a blessing on this, our time together, as we sing and pray and worship you. Open our hearts to your message contained in each and every part of this service. Keep our mind from wandering to our earthly problems, so you, O Lord, will be glorified, praised, honored, and adored. Our last song will be on our lips all this week long, for indeed, Jesus loves even me. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. We'll ask you to stand and sing that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, number 630. seated. Our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 20 verses 6 through 9 and I will lead you in that responsive reading at this time. Now this I know. He answered him from his heavenly sanctuary. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. And they are brought to their knees and fall. Lord, give victory to the King. Amen. This time I will ask the ushers to take up your offering.
We have a future songsters in our midst. <laughs> it is wonderful to hear. Shall we pray? Father God, we come to you again to thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to give back to you once again. Lord, as we look at the sunshine, as we feel the promise of spring, Lord, we ask that you will continue to bless each and every one of us as we continue to seek to serve you in any way that we can during the week ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 213. Does anybody want to come forward? You don't want to come forward? Are you? Would you hand out some? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody who would like to have a musical instrument? And we are going to be singing number 213. We bring the sacrifice of praise. And we're going to sing that through two times once these instruments are handed out. says she's not too familiar with it and that's why she's playing with one finger. We'll ask you to stand as we sing. <laughs> we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. children to come forward for children's story. story before but um, I just printed it off on the paper but it's usually in, in a book it's a very famous uh, children's story and it's called the boy who cried wolf there once was a young shepherd boy who tended his sheep at the foot of a mountain near a dark forest it was rather lonely for him all day so he thought upon a plan by which he could get a little company and some excitement he rushed down towards the village, calling out, Wolf! Wolf! 
And the villagers came out to meet him, and some of them stopped with him for a considerable time. This pleased the boy so much that a few days afterwards he tried the same trick, and again the villagers came to his help. But shortly after this, a wolf actually did come out of the forest and began to worry the sheep, which just means it was chasing them and trying to catch them. And the boy, of course, cried out, Wolf, wolf, still louder than before. But this time, the villagers who had been fooled twice before thought the boy was again deceiving them, and nobody stirred to come to his help. So the wolf made a good meal off the boy's flock. And when the boy complained, the wise men of the village said, A liar will not be believed even when he speaks the truth. And the Bible tells us that every good thing comes from God. And one of the good things God tells us is not to be a false witness. And being a false witness is not telling the truth. So this story, by, uh, known as an Aesop fable, is really, when you dig down deep into it, based on a truth that God has taught us. So let us always remember not to cry wolf when one isn't there and to always tell the truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your word is the source of all goodness. And Father, we're reminded this morning that we are not to bear false witness. We are to tell the truth. Lord, give us the courage to do that, to tell the truth as you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have received a number of prayer requests this morning, and uh, I did not receive one praise item, though. Sharon. Anyone else have any praise or prayer requests? Irene. I should uh, pray to God, and I've been thanking him every day since I fell, and and see what a good job that he did in my chin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God. I uh, have a praise item from Herb and Gladys. They are want me to. Uh, say how much they very much appreciate getting those sermons every week and to be able to hear it and to hear your wonderful singing. So uh, you'll have to sing out even louder as you go along. Any other prayer requests or praise items? If not, let us go to our Lord. Father, at the start of this a new week, it is good and fitting to be here in your house gathered to worship you. Gather to encourage each other as we seek to follow your word, to love you above all and our neighbors as ourselves. During this past week, we have failed to do this as fully as we could have. And we ask for you and your love and grace to forgive us. What a blessing it is to be able to openly worship you. What a blessing it is to encourage each other on our walk as we seek to become more like Jesus. This morning we ask for an extra measure of grace and encouragement for missionaries and pastors throughout the world. May their word find fertile ground. May folks come to a saving knowledge of you through the working of the Holy Spirit, wherever your message of love and salvation is proclaimed. We thank and praise you for your sustaining hand through this past week. We thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for health. We thank you for families and friends. We also thank you for what appears to be a more stable relations 
leadership in the world politics. Be with those you have placed in positions of leadership. This morning, we also thank you that Sharon could arrive home safe on Friday evening. Lord, you are always, keep, you are always in the passenger seat. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to be with each of us as we travel the roads. We thank you that Irene can be back here with us. And Lord, yes, she did have a tumble, but you are a healing God, and you have healed her as well. Father, you encourage us to bring our needs before you as well. This morning we pray for the young lad up in Lion's Head, Alex. May the chemo treatments eradicate his cancer, and me and his, may he and his family see this as a blessing from you. Be with those in retirement and nursing homes. We remember Harvey and Alice. We ask that you restore Harvey to full strength. Be with Gladys and Herb. Keep them safe from the illness in their building. We ask that you continue to bless Irene, Miriam, Grace, Florence, Joyce, and Ab in Gateway. We thank you that Emily is feeling much better. We ask you to be with Neil and Rosemary, with Bauer and Faye, Bonnie, Eva, Nancy Hopkins, Roberta, Leslie, Marlene. We also ask, Lord, that you'll be with the Stewart and Brune family in the passing away of their brother Gary. And Lord, we ask you to be with Shannon's father, George, as he too is going for tests as they try to seek out what is wrong with him. Father, at the start of this spring break, we also pray for safety for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. May we be an example to them, showing them, show, show us how to draw them into a closer relationship with you. You state in the Bible, you want, none of, you want no one to be lost. So give us the right words of love and encouragement as we interact with folks during the week ahead. We ask that you bless Pastor Shannon as she now opens your word and brings us your message. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm glad everyone got their clocks corrected <laughs> this morning. Hopefully you weren't up at 2 o'clock or whatever it, hour it was when it officially turned over. Let us take to heart the word of God as recorded in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 to 9. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor, and they rebuked her harshly. Let her alone, said Jesus, why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. 
The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Here end, ends the reading of our, the word to us from Mark. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these words of truth that you have given us. Open our ears to it so that we may accept them with gladness. Open our hearts to your correction that we would know your wisdom. May our joy be found in you. Through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, L'Oreal is the largest cosmetics company in the world, selling approximately 50 products every second. Its success, in part, I'm sure, is based on its slogan, Because I'm Worth It, introduced in 1971. The message being that no matter the cost, the, need, the one in need of reducing wrinkles, covering gray hair, or smelling better is worth the cost of their product. Well, this morning I want to redirect our focus from what the world advertises and how it defines what you are worthy of to what the holy inspired word of God has to say about who is worthy. When you figure out who is worthy of your time and money and service and devotion, you'll not only feel better, you will smell better. And you might ask, how can I say that you're going to smell better by studying scripture? For those who are born anew through faith in the death and resurrection of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Word of God tells us that we as believers are the pleasing aroma of Christ and that the Prince of Peace uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Read for yourself the words from verses 14 to 16 of the book of 2 Corinthians, which says, But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are an aroma that brings death, to the other an aroma that brings life. Those of us who have confessed our sins to Jesus, who sacrificed himself on the cross at Calvary for our sakes, and know what it is to be forgiven, we are a pleasing aroma of Christ. And when we spread our personal knowledge of the one who redeems us, and clothes us with righteousness, we are an aroma that brings life, and we are a pleasing aroma because we are the aroma of Christ. The parallel account of Jesus' anointing at Bethany is found in the Gospel of John. And it reveals that Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, was the one who anointed Jesus as he reclined at the table. In the Old Testament, prophets were occasionally anointed to their office and were called messiahs or the anointed. Priests at the first institution of the Levitical priesthood were all anointed to their offices. But afterwards, anointing was specially reserved for the high priest. 
Anointing was the principal and divinely appointed ceremony in the inauguration of the Jewish kings. Anointing the head was also how you customarily treated an honored guest at a banquet. Mary's anointing was an act of worship and devotion that recognized Christ's divinity and worth. It recognized Jesus as a prophet, as the Messiah, as our high priest, and as our king who chose to die at the hands of those who were looking for some sly way to arrest him and kill him. Leading up to this time, Jesus had often said that he would be betrayed, killed, buried, and that he would rise again. But his disciples didn't believe him, for they didn't want it to happen. But Mary had been listening to Jesus. This was the Mary described in Luke, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said who Jesus described as having chosen what is better, saying that it will not be taken away from her. So believing his words, Mary lovingly ministered to him in his last week before he went to the cross. What was done by Mary was so significant that the author of life himself prophesies that wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And so here we are this morning, preaching the gospel in Wyerton, and this woman is remembered for her expression of reverence and gratitude that she showed to the gentle shepherd, our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that she came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. The book of John records how the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Some of the, those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. And in this group were the disciples rebuking her harshly. True enough, how a person spends his or her money tells a lot about their priorities in life. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What kind of scrutiny could our expenditures endure, endure against that standard? Mary's gift to God, her act of devotion that showed the love she had for her Lord, cost her dearly. She had to endure the rebuke, the reprimanding, the scolding that some of those presents leveled at her. They tried to shame her for the gift she was giving to Christ. To lavish such an expensive oil on Jesus escaped the reason of those around her. Spikenard, where this perfume nard comes from, was an uncommon perfume extracted from grasses that grew in the Himalayas of India. Once the juices were squeezed out of them, they were dried into a hard, lard-like substance. And turning that lard-like substance into perfume probably still is a very lengthy and costly process. Not to mention the cost and the time it would take getting it from India to Bethany. And to have some understanding of just how expensive her gift was, the Bible tells us that 12 ounces 
of nard was worth more than a year's wages, 300 denarii, the wage for 300 days. Today, a person working at minimum wage for eight hours a day for 300 days would gross $33,600. However, the protesters in our text point out that the perfume could have been sold for more than a year's wages. In 2000, 2011, DKNY introduced what they called the Golden Delicious Million Dollar Fragrance Bottle, carved out of eight, 14 karat yellow and white gold. The top of it is adorned with diamonds outlining the New York City skyline. It contains 2,909 precious stones and contains a perfume that is described as a more mature, elegant fragrance designed for women who are not afraid to use her charm to get what she wants. That is who the world defines as the deserving recipient of its most expensive scent, whose price is prohibitive. However, that does not define God's criteria. Whereas the world creates something so outrageously out of reach, God offers himself as a free gift a free gift of eternal salvation to all who call on his name. And we know when we take delight in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our hearts. God deems Mary as a fragrant aroma because her charm was found in her giving what she had. She was the aroma of Christ, giving a precious gift, honoring God. Now, apparently the net proceeds of the sale of that bejeweled, golden, delicious fragrance bottle at auction were to be donated to the charity Action Against Hunger, something that might have made Mary's, Mary's critics happy, for they wanted her to sell her perfume and give it to the poor, rather than use it to revere her Lord, to whom she was forever grateful. But notice how even in our day, this spectacular article crafted with the gems of God's creation using the skills endowed by our creator only garners the net profits of its worth. The leftovers, after the costs have been deducted, that was what was to be given to the poor. When will we learn that Jesus is worthy from the rising of the sun to its going down? Jesus is worthy of our most reverent, most sacrificial, most submissive form of worship because his love for you and I caused him to submit to sacrificing himself completely holy when will we learn that Jesus is worthy when you compare the cost of Christ's sacrifices to that of Mary's expression of worship it certainly dwarfs her offering but notice in his compassionate grace the one who was bruised for our transgression transgressions says leave her alone why are you bothering her she has done a beautiful thing to me she has prepared me for burial 
even though her use of a very expensive jar of perfume was deemed an extravagant outpouring in the eyes of her contemporaries, and even appreciated by us even centuries later. We can't fail to praise him enough for the peace and protection that we know because he paid the price for our sins. Leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing to me, Jesus said. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For he loves us with unfailing love. The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. President Jimmy Carter is quoted as saying, My faith demands that I do whatever I can, wherever I am, whenever I can, for as long as I can, with whatever I have, to try to make a difference. Mary's gift was an expression of tearful gratitude for Jesus' raising of her brother from the dead, in addition to her own awareness of God's mercy and grace in her life. And I don't know who among us has a gift of a year's wages to lavish on our Lord. And I'm not sure that that's the point of this piece of scripture. But it does call us to give in worship. When speaking of Mary's sacrifices, Jesus said, she did what she could. What a commendation from the one who gave his like his life for the likes of you and I. She did what she could. How sweet would it be to hear our Lord say that of you and of I. She did what she could. He did what he could. So how can we do that? The Apostle Paul pleads with us, as dear brothers and sisters, I urge you, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies to God because of all he has done for us. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable, acceptable for this is truly the way we worship him. In the... In the 86,400 seconds that make up a day, you and I need to do what we can to offer our most reverent, most sacrificial, most submissive form of worship. We need to use our bodies, our time, our talents, and the products of all those gifts and abilities for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. And if you have not yet repented of your sins and accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, may today be the day. Today is the day to repent, to be a pleasing aroma of Christ. Today is the day to know the joy of lavishing on him your most precious form of praise and service. For our Lord God, mediator and savior, Jesus Christ, for he alone is holy and he alone is worthy of our gifts. Let us pray. Dear God, most high, reveal yourself to those who have not claimed you as their savior. Lord, impress upon their hearts their need for your forgiveness and for your help and guidance. Help us to do what we can with what you have blessed us with so that we would be a memorial to your mercy. In the precious, worthy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Our final hymn is hymn number 495. Please sing with me, Jesus Loves Even Me. loves you. I send you into the week with this benediction. May God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance. Amen. <laughs>